What's up, everybody? Welcome to our latest vlog. We are here in Seattle. We're about to go hang out with uh, John and Andy and everyone else from Monuments. My biggest question is, is my wife, who's holding the camera right now, is she going to be the only woman at the show? Because you know how it is, the more strings there are on the guitars, the fewer women there are at the show. We will find out. Also, I'm going to cheat a little bit and reuse or cut in a little bit of footage from one of our previous trips up to Seattle with our friend Deanna, who is my podcast producer. I'm gonna pretend that that was part of this same trip. So uh, feel free to jump in the comments and point out the continuity errors, but yeah. So let's, uh, let's enjoy our vlog that is actually two vlogs that I'm pretending is one vlog. Story time. First of all, we both used to work down here. This is South Lake Union, if you're familiar with Seattle. I used to work a couple blocks down that way when I worked for Creative Life. But right behind us is this coffee shop. We went here in, what was that, maybe 2015 or something like that? I don't remember, but it's been a few years. Periphery was playing at the venue uh, down the block here, and we went here with uh, Matt from Periphery, and we were, you know, whatever, drinking coffee, doing our thing. And in walks Adam Elmakayas, <laughs> with Pierce the Veil. And we're like, oh, hey guys. So if you want to hang out with people in bands, I guess this is the coffee shop. This is the coffee place to stock them. I really like South Lake Union. I do too. Ever, all the all the hipsters and stuff hate it here because it's, you know, it's new and fancy and stuff. And so, it's all Amazon. Yeah, so they hate it, which means we love it. This building's really cool. With the colors. Don't look too long or it'll turn you gay. It's a rainbow. It's like the rainbow cake Wait, at Barnes & Noble. Awesome. If you eat the rainbow cake at Barnes & Noble, it turns you gay. You know I'm not gonna put any of that into the vlog, right? <laughs> Why not? Trust me, <laughs> I'm doing you a favor. You're saving me from myself. Yeah. Cool building though, huh? Yeah. Which which side of the building would you live on? I would wanna live in the third one over here, like the one that goes from like red to like fuchsia. Okay, so like the middle one? Okay, yes. the third window to the, yes. the one right? One. Yes. One this one yeah. right here. Okay. I think I live in this one, the purple, like the one right after uh -huh. it turns pink. That's your favorite color. Yeah. Does it smell like snake shit everywhere down here? Because the Amazon Amazonians are snakes. Snakes. Sucking out the blood of the working class. Right. Yeah, that sticker will That's really right. show Jeff Bezos, <laughs> huh? Jeff Bezos has been real quiet since that sticker dropped. So here's one of the bougie little malls downtown. I haven't been here in probably like four years or something like that since you worked down here. Also, do you know what is in the top floor of this building? What? Tommy Bahama headquarters. But well, we're in Seattle, Washington. I know, I have no idea why you would choose to run Tommy Bahama from Seattle, Washington. So where should the headquarters be? The Bahamas. Uh, oh, I don't know. Maybe the presence of Tommy Bahama here is to incite inspiration to all these depressing Seattleite people. Just trying to bring a little bit of that Caribbean spice. Exactly. A little bit of that Margaritaville lifestyle. Maybe so. Well, let's check it out. Let's take a walk through 400 feet. Help me, there's stairs. I'm going to trip. And see if maybe, maybe we'll see Tommy Bahama himself. Mr. Tommy? Yeah. Is, Mr. Is, is Thomas Mr. Bahama? Is Mr. Bahama in? <laughs> Can we just can we just can we just get a picture with Mr. Bahama? This is where we can meet Look. Thomas. See? There it is. Mr. Bahama may be sitting there. Imagine him sitting there at his desk wearing uh, you know, one of the button-up shirts. Maybe, uh, he's probably got a margarita in his hand, 24 seven, uh, some white pants, just feet up on his desk. And his, uh, the sign on his desk just says, Mr. Bahama, or just oh. says, call me Tom. Oh, honey, honey, behind you, behind you. Ha <laughs> ha, just kidding. I got you, uh, I got you. Damn it. You fell for it. I fight. know why you're so offended. Why? Because he makes your favorite perfume sent to you by Scentbird, which was not, this is not sponsored. It was a previous sponsor. It's called Cologne. Perfume oh, is for women. Oh, oh God, oh God, okay. I, Honey, we live in a postmodern progressive society. How wearing, about we chill out with the gender terms, okay? Ba Maritime Deep Blue by Tommy Bahama. It is called a Cologne. Perfume is for women, Cologne is for men. 
You're sounding real hateful right now. It makes me feel every morning when I put it on, I feel one step closer to my goal of retiring like Sammy Hagar in the Bahamas. Oh, he's by he's behind you, babe. But, <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> you got me again. I got you again. Oh. Ha ha. Tell me about this place that we're in front of right now. Okay, so this place right here is called Babar. Uh, and take a look at how nice the exterior is. The beautiful interior design we have. Let's see trendy upscale Vietnamese food, right? I don't know what the hell Saigon chicken wings are, <laughs> but okay. As they say in my language. Mac wah. But say that again. Mac wah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I want you to compare and contrast this with the footage that you either already saw or are about to see of us in the dirty, filthy, grimy, nasty international district when it comes to Vietnamese food in Seattle. What you want to look for is some uh, nasty hole in the wall where it looks like they've barely swept the place in eight years. Ideally, the food safety rating is like the needs improvement yeah, one. Yeah, we can show, we can show. Yeah, well, at least it's not excellent. Yeah, if it's excellent, that's not good. You want this one. Yeah. Or the top one. Yeah, I think the needs imp needs to improve means that you're gonna close in like two weeks. Yeah. But yeah, like, okay is the one that you should look for. Now, I don't wanna be talking complete shit though, because this is, as I understand, this is not like some, you know, hipster It is a person. Vietnamese guy that- I think it's a Vietnamese hipster. Yeah. But it's still a Vietnamese person, still, you know, out there doing their thing, so. It's a beautiful restaurant and I wish them success, but the food sucks. We had our little tour of South Lake Union. Now we're gonna go to the show. Before the show, we're gonna have a little meetup. As some of you guys may or may not know, I'm a partner in a couple companies. One of them is called Riff Hard, which is an online school for metal guitars. So if you want to learn how to gent and shred, we will teach you how. And uh, one of the partners in that company is John from Monuments. So we're doing a little VIP meetup thing where a bunch of Riff Hard and URM Academy members are going to go hang out. And uh, yeah, let's go check it out. Here he is. How are you? Good to see you too. Sorry if I smell. I'm not at Lynn. Yeah, Lynn, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Sorry, we're vlogging here, so. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, cool. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so this is the amp, and it's two amps and then two di digital amps as well. So it's running a quad track setup with three instances of the TC Mimic pedal, but the built-in version on the Helix. So basically, only one of them is real, hey, and three are moving. Yeah, man. Um, What's that for? Like stereo? Just make it sound like more than one guitar player. Yeah. Obviously, we were a dual guitar band. Right. Right. And going from a dual guitar band to a single guitar, it's like it needs to sound that big. Right. So, then, so the TC Mimic pedal is like a doubler? Uh, it, oh. It's kind of like a doubler, but it also pitch changes oh, slightly. Oh, just and it moves, like varies. Yeah, like it's those all. organic That's kind of. Exactly, and it's randomized as well. Oh, so it's like it moves time and then it moves pitch. Interesting. But not enough that it sounds like chorus. Right, right. It actually just sounds like too it's wild. Huh. It's actually wild. Because uh, I was trying it in my studio, I was like, I don't think this is sounding very good. And I turned it off and I'm like, oh, it sounds really good. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've been doing that. So one side's the beta, one side's the SLO module in the Synergy, power to the cabs, the cabs mic up, and then the Helix directly. So that's all just to make it sound like there is more than one. one. Yeah, more than one. Yeah. 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 I hate carrying all of this, right. but it sounds good. No women so far. What's that? No, oh, there's no. one person. Yes. There's one woman. One two. so far. No, two, two. Accompanying. There's two? Yeah, there's that lady over here. Okay. And then there's that lady over here. Uh-huh. Everyone, all of them looking bored. <laughs> yeah, like I was for just a second here. So with our VIPs, uh, we get you know anyone gets the opportunity to play the instrument of their choice on stage with us for some of the monument songs. If they know even just a rip of it, we can jam it. And it's been great for me because I get to watch the monuments play, which has actually never happened before at all this tour. So I'm stoked.
Nice work. Someone practiced. Everybody practiced, I'm sure. That was really good. That was really good. That was really good. I'm out of job. John, welcome to America. Thank you very much. Well, here's the real question. Is it true that you were one of the founders of Gen? No, that was my sugar. Sixth, maybe. I mean, I guess that period of time with like Misha, Ackle, Paul, and yeah. me, okay, I guess that was kind of the beginning of it. But I think the sound had kind of halfway already been done with my sugar and sixth. I said in the beginning, the more strings are on the guitars, the less girls are at the show. That's actually very, very true. <laughs> like four string bass, they're all there, especially for playing reggae. That's right, exactly. Now go see a Primus show. Yeah, there's no one there except dudes that are sweating. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we have walked past this place hundreds of times. Oh yeah, I walk past here to get to work all the time. Never been inside. Are you excited? I'm excited. Andy, you're from you're from Maryland. That's right. Important question: Sheets or Wawa? Uh, definitely Sheets. Got to have those mac and cheese bites, baby. Come on. Dots, MTOs, Fizz City, and if you smoke, Jacks. Uh, I don't smoke. I don't either. <laughs> but if I did smoke, yeah. MTOs most important thing. MTOs. Best fast food sandwich. They had the, uh, the the kiosk ordering things like 20 years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Pioneers of sorts. Exactly. Right. Cool. Did not know that, but that's because I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm, I'm almost 30, actually. I'm getting up there. Now, I know you guys over in the UK have some you know, political changes coming. Here's my idea. I think the candidate that could save your country, Danny Dyer. I actually agree with you. But he would actually be better than anything we've had in the last hundred years. Oh yeah, I'll take anyone. I'll take literally anyone at this point. I'll take an actor happily. Please, Danny Dyer, step up to the plate. And Ross Kemp. Yeah, oh, Ross Kemp. Fold is the funniest thing I've ever seen. You ever watch that? What's that? So it's Ross Kemp's face folded in different <laughs> Kempfolds.com. <laughs> I'm gonna show you. This. I, my favorite British TV show is Danny Dyer's Dangerous Men. Okay. Right. Do you remember that one? Yeah. I he haven't would, seen that. He would go. So he would go find some like bad guy, like that used to be a mob enforcer or something like that, in some state, and like follow him around doing his thing. And every time he'd be like, he seemed like a right nice geezer, then he'd done a runner. <laughs> can, can, can you out. translate? what that means? Uh, he's left the building. He's out. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> you need to see it. Ross Kemp Folds. Kemp Folds, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's ask Finn first. So on a scale of so on a scale Maryland. of one to ten, no sevens. No sevens. What would you rate your food? I'll, I'll go with an eight. But I gotta say, we have quite a few British people at the table here. And I feel like British people's opinions on Indian, Indian food should count at least double mine. So, okay, so we're, we're on an 8.7 here. Oh, wait, no, no, wait. No, wait. No, no, I'm no, the most British person here. Get my opinion. All I right, what's your opinion? It's a solid five out of seven from Andy Sizzik, British tour guard. Thank you uh, very much. What about? I'm the only Indian here. That's right, we should ask the Indian person. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. Ooh. Ten. Ooh. 10 out of 10. Thumbs up. Would you recommend to a friend? Hell yeah. Ooh. Hell yeah. Am I yeah. You, you said yeah. eight, nine, I'm going to upgrade to a nine. I've had another yeah, nine. nine? Okay. Nine. Okay. Yeah. How about you? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say between eight and nine currently. Yeah. All right. So that was it. That was our gent vlog. We're headed home. If you ever wanted to know what it's like to live in the exciting world of Gent, now you know. Do you want to tell people to subscribe to your channel and all that YouTube shit? Uh, thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring <laughs> this video. Wow, look at this. It doesn't look yeah, all tacky nice. anymore. Yeah. Wow. What do you think of the new Uwajimaya? That's nice. Uwajimaya has always been way nicer than all the Chinese and Vietnamese grocery stores that I grew up going to. 
But this place is actually clean. I actually used to come here when I was a kid back in the late 80s and early 90s to like buy Gundam toys and stuff. And back then it was kind of like, I don't want to say filthy, but it was like filthy-ish. Uh, and now it's like kind of nice. And I don't know what to think about that. I will be Hokage. Trump part. <laughs> based. I feel like Naruto is like, is, is drawn decently. Sakura is not that great. And they just like gave up by the time they got to Sasuke. Like, where the fuck is his other eye? I know it's kind of hard to draw a Rinnegan that, that detail. Cry. Holy fuck, it fucking smells. Holy shit. Nobody ever came to the International District because it smells good. When we first started dating, I said, well, I guess I should meet your family sooner rather than later because if they don't like me, we can't be together, right? Because that's just how it works, you know? It's not like white families where it's like, I hate my mom, she can't tell me what to do. If my mom doesn't approve, then she can fuck off. It doesn't work like that, you know, with, uh, you know, with basically everybody other than white Americans. Like if, if the parents don't approve, it's kind of game over. So I said, well, we might as well get this over. I should just meet them, meet her, meet your parents and all your siblings. And uh, if they don't like me, it's better to find out sooner rather than later. So I said, uh, well, let's all meet at Honey Court, this dim sum place here. There's like 10 people there. Uh, and I just got interrogated. Um, and I remember, you know, they were just asking me like, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Like, how much money know, do you make? Yeah, do you date, what? do you date Asian girls all the time? <laughs> like, and I remember uh, one of them, I, I think, I think it was your sister, I don't remember, uh, asked, uh, she's like, what kind of car do you have? And I told her, and she's like, what year? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow, they're really going for it, but it's okay. I was not flustered, you know, it's like, I was- They're trying to sniff out any weakness. Exactly. That's when they pounce. Exactly, it's just like in prison, you just gotta go up to the, the biggest guy you can see and just punch him right in the mouth. So they know that even if you get your ass beat, at least they can respect you for taking a beating. So that's kind of how I looked at that um, meeting. I was probably just so nervous. I was just waiting for it to be over, to be honest. Like, I was like, that's a lie. I honestly don't remember much. <laughs> I was just like eating some food. I was like, ooh, like my little, my my honey walnut shrimp. Okay, I'm gonna eat some of that. Oh, okay, oh, the heck out. I'm gonna eat some of that. You're the one that was in the hot seat. I didn't give a fuck. Yeah. I was there for the food. Honey, careful, careful. See, he almost died, but that was your fault. <laughs> but that would have been cool. It would have been to great get that on camera. I was just trying to make content. All right, you got in the way. That was about to be the best fucking shot in the vlog, and you ruined it. I know. What's his nice face? Logan, Logan Paul has nothing on that. This is the grocery store in which we would go to whenever we came up here for eating out and then getting like the good shit. Because there's like a small Vietnamese grocery store in my hometown and it's, it's cute, it's humble. They're working hard, they're doing their thing. But in our humble town, we just couldn't get the good shit. So we come here for the good shit. You can tell it's a good grocery store because it's filthy on the inside. Uh -huh. <laughs> Asian grocery stores, you cannot trust them if they are clean. I don't know why, it just is what it is. We made it to America, diseases aren't even a thing. And we'll never go to the doctor to get them checked out, but <laughs> we're just living out here, you know what I mean? Well, Deanna, I understand you're somewhat of an expert on Vietnamese people. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't recall saying that. Well, I mean, you grew up around you many of them. More Vietnamese people than I did. That's right. That's probably true. It's definitely true. Yeah. You grew They're up great. around the largest concentration of Vietnamese people outside Vietnam. That is true. I did grow up near Little Saigon. But you avoided them. It, it, wasn't that I, okay. it wasn't that I avoided them. It's just that I went to school I just think it's in better other if we're, cities. It's just better if we don't associate with each other. That's all. Except for pretty cool. Exactly. That's what I'm hearing. Okay, well, let's go look inside. See, like, look at these floors. That's how you know. Yeah. You're not going to see a safe way with floors this, like this. Or look at the, the bins. Yeah, like there's no light on it. Nope. I guess there's some on this one, but it's just a cardboard box. Yeah. That's how you know. Phil. Look at that. Phil! Look how dirty all these are. Like. You 
don't give a fuck. Oh, check this out. This is how you know. The Costco of minced garlic. <laughs> and if, in case you don't know or haven't noticed, we're not in a Costco. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, here we go. Here's the Costco pepper. Nice. The, just like your mom has. Just like how we also have too. Because <laughs> Costco is great. How many times have I mentioned Costco <laughs> since you've been staying with us? I lost count of how many times Costco has come up in conversation, but probably at least 10 in I mean, like four days. This stuff, goaded. Better than crack. Especially if you had, especially if you add extra condensed milk to it. Oh, yes, here it is. Here's, here's the one I like. Look at this guy, just striding confidently from his helicopter. What a fucking boss. His bitch looking at him like she just fell in love with him all over again. This man is a boss and it's all because he drinks a cup of G7 coffee every morning. BDE as they say. But when it comes to instant noodles, I don't know what the popular brands are. Is it Nissin? Uh, Maruchan? Mm -hmm. No. No? What's no. what's the what's the one? I mean, I'll take any kind of instant noodles because instant noodles are great. Which is the one? This is the brand. Indomie. Mi goreng noodles. If this came in a Costco size, it will be game over. You gotta have... So yeah, this was a, a Kirkland signature. Does that count? <laughs> I didn't quite say the C word. I mean... <laughs> Kind of counts. Does the, the C word? Unless count? there's another place that you get Kirkland signature. Well, I know another place where we can get Kirkland signature stuff. This place. Okay. Are, we, are we finished here? I think we're finished here. Right. There's your little taste of uh, taste of little Saigon. 